Alrighty, so that's module number two, welcome back. Uh, we'll skip through the intro because it's again, as I mentioned, designed to have a break in between. So there'll be a lot of recapping for people that might have had a rest in between the different modules. So reminding people what we're doing, done all that, remembering our model. So this module is all about Energize, as we mentioned before. Energize is when we are, as a safety leader, trying to get people to be flexible and, and do things differently and embrace change. Um, and also focus on that more success-oriented um, approach. So getting people to be focused on achieving, moving forward, innovating, growing, being creative. Um, so a combination of, of different sorts of mindsets is where our safety leadership skills really hone in and create that environment. So um, one of the safety leadership challenges for this module is about taking um, the vision of ShredX or the organisation that, that you're working with um, and talking about that with your team and driving engagement towards that safety vision. Um, so Energize is about representing what the company wants to achieve with safety, talking about it with your team, translating it, getting them to, to speak up and get involved in that conversation. So Energize, all about creating meaning and purpose for people when it comes to safety. Um, this is probably one of the biggest opportunities that we have to make a difference when it comes to safety leadership because if you talk to people about safety, they often say, well, it's about just following the rules or ticking the boxes. There's no real sense that this is there for a deeper reason or a deeper purpose. And that's where the Energize component is about a leader really creating that inspirational environment and getting people to, to connect to those core ideas. So one way as a safety leader that you can start to um, create that is through what we call our safety commitment drivers. So these drivers are the ways that we start to, to demonstrate our commitment to safety and there's different techniques we can use to, to achieve that goal. So the first one we can think about is called the rules-based driver and that's just where as a leader we're more transactional, we're referring back to well the procedures say we have to do it, um, if you don't follow that there might be some punishment or discipline involved. Um, or if we don't follow those rules, there could be a regulator implication where an inspector might give us a fine, for example. So this is really our, our sort of base level safety commitment drive. We, we can do better than this one. You must have been in the management Why? Is that, <laughs> is that there? I can do better than that this morning. <laughs> <laughs> okay, gotcha, gotcha. So it's, it's one driver that we can use. It's part of the toolkit, but there are others that we, that we should also draw on. So, the next one is our values-based commitment driver. So this is where we can start to refer to our um, commitment to the company values or vision. So talk about those things with our team and see how, and then explain how we're living those and how they're connected to the work. We can talk about the expectations of our community and our customers. You know, what would our customers think if they saw you doing that? Or, you know, what, what are some of the, um, the requirements of, of being a ShredX employee? What sort of example do we want to set for other organisations and for our customers? And we can also draw on things like our government messaging, so like the, the Safe Moments That Matter campaign, um, those advertising uh, things that you see out there on the TV and radio. Uh, they're examples of where we're tapping into values, things that people think are important and are part of our, community, um, our community's makeup. The third one is our relationship-based safety commitment driver, and that's arguably our most powerful tool in our commitment driver toolbox. All right? So this is, a, this is where, as a leader, you take that time to understand where someone's coming from, you ask them about their home life, you talk about how safety may impact that home life or their enjoyment of different things, and sort of connect to them on that personal level. So that's one of our most powerful tools is to spend that time actually connecting with our people and understanding them um, and, and appreciating all the different diversity that they bring to the organisation. So in reality, we use all those things together. We don't just focus on the rules driver by itself, but sometimes we have to do that, but we connect it also with the values and the relationship drivers too. So it's about being balanced, about using all those different techniques and tools um, when it comes to leading safety uh, in a ShredX and in any organisation. So can you think of some of these um, different commitment drivers and where you might have seen different leaders use them? Have you seen anyone maybe use that relationship-based driver in a ShredX? And that's what the council did, is they came up with their, their vision, they talked about it, they put it down on paper and embedded it in here. And the reason for the training then was about communicating that vision and then encouraging those supervisors to actually start talking to their teams about it. And that's the, the, the homework activity for this module, is to take that, that vision that the company's come up with, have a discussion, lead a, lead a team discussion about that, and bring the feedback um, to the next module. 
So it's really about cascading it down, organizational uh, vision, talk about it at the team level, that it then influences people's behaviors. So we talk about it as a bit of a... All right. All right, great discussion, guys. Thanks. So moving on with the content, the next section is about um, how do you go about communicating in an influencing sort of persuasive way? And one of the models that we've come across is this one here. So it's a way of structuring your communications into probably was it five different steps uh, to get the biggest impact. So if you are starting to talk about a vision, if you are starting to get, want to get people involved and energized and excited, uh, this is one structure that you can use. So step number one is to gather the attention. So the objective here is capturing people's interest so they actually want to listen to you. So rather than just jumping into the details about asking a question, presenting an interesting fact, um, you know, being a little bit controversial maybe, or making a statement that gets people to stand up and pay attention. So capturing that interest firstly. And step number two, uh, articulating the problem. So you might have a, a safety vision in, in mind, but we need to get people on that journey by describing why do we need it? You know, people are still getting hurt, we just had an incident you know, last week, or really giving a sense that this is needed and it says that there's a reason for getting people involved. Uh, present the solution, so that's the next step, is articulating, well, what do we need to do? What's the vision? What does the company want us to, to get involved in? You know, speaking up, um, you know, listening to each other, understanding where, we are, where our strengths and opportunities are. So there's tangible things that people need to do. Help me see the future is the next step, is to visualize and help your team to understand what is ShredX going to look like in the next five or ten years if we all get behind this vision? So that's where you help them to imagine that future Describe what you think it might look like. What would the culture be? You know, what are some of the behaviours that people might demonstrate? And leave them with an action. Give them one thing they could walk away from that meeting or that, that discussion with of something they need to do right now. Okay, so they can start that process. So here's a bit of an example um, based upon the council. So attention, you can ask questions. Does anyone know what council's vision for health and safety is? You might get you know, maybe one hand go up or something. So we can talk about what that is, and then say, well, despite this vision, people are still being hurt at work, and provide some examples of where that might be happening. Give them some tangible examples. So as a team, what we need to do is, and as a leader, articulating what you want your team to get involved in, the behaviors you want them to show. Imagine what we could achieve if we all did that. What kind of workplace, what kind of team would we be able to get to? And we can make a difference now. One of the things I'd like you to do straight away after this session is, provide your feedback on the vision or um, you know, make a suggestion about how to improve safety in your work, work team as in line with whatever that vision might be. So that's just an example of using that, that framework in practice. Application time, so when we do run this properly, people get a chance to actually have a go at using that framework and, and go through the steps and thinking about how they might start to talk about the vision. Um, so again, we'll, we'll skip over that just because of time. So, given that we've got a, a vision, maybe we've sort of got one in the works, we've got a draft vision of where we want the company or the organisation to head, how do you think we can start to encourage people to take that up? What are some of the things we can do as, as leaders? Let's look at some of the te te techniques and strategies we can use to engage people when it comes to safety leadership. So, there's four little things that, that we can do, four little tools or techniques or strategies. The first way to engage people is about highlighting the value or impact that they're having. So whether it be uh, talking about their achievements or sort of saying, look, this is, this is how I think our team is contributing to that vision. I've seen you guys do this, wear your vests, take the time to slow down the job, examples of those. Um, really highlighting how they're contributing to that, that overall outcome is one way. Um, as we've already mentioned, this idea of independence or autonomy, giving those, those uh, opportunities for people to get involved themselves, maybe creating a little project team to talk about how you might do things differently in, in safety, in, in regards to safety, uh, giving people decision-making authority, so where they might need to you know, think about um, how they might uh, choose a particular piece of PPE, what kinds of gear might be more or less relevant to that, that team, they can have decision-making over that. Uh, Engagement is also built by giving people skills, so giving them training, education, whether it be on the job or formal, off the job, classroom based stuff. Um, as a leader, you can step up and start to educate and provide and hand over your own knowledge to build that engagement. And lastly, consultation. Consultation, when it's done well, builds engagement because again, like we've already said a few, more, few times today, 
It's about listening to people authentically, hearing their ideas, giving them feedback, closing the loop. So there's four ways we can, we can start to engage people. So why is it important to engage others? Well, the research suggests that when we do have this sort of participative, more commitment-based approach to safety, we get better trust and better safety outcomes than if we are coming directively and say, I'm, I'm the commander here, this is, how, this is how it is, you comply or you get out. Um, that more relationship-based approach we know leads to better outcomes. Right? So that's, that's why it's so important. So in terms of enhancing value and impact, remember that that's number one of our four techniques. So having our regular meetings and talking about that uh, when it comes to how people are contributing, so where you do have recognition in those meetings, you do acknowledge the achievements of different people. Sharing how the company is going when it comes to safety targets and different sorts of metrics that you're taking care of. Um, so fill, I guess connecting the dots with people so they know well, when they do that behaviour out on site, that's actually having it making a difference to the company's performance. And that sort of leads into that last point, how people contribute to that, that overall um, company success. So an example there from, um, yeah, from the council is that they have a regular newsletter that goes out to all staff, and they thought of an idea where, you know, at a toolbox or a pre-start, they, they take a piece out of that newsletter and start to, you know, uh, talk about it with staff and lead a discussion on that. So enhancing know-how is another one of those strategies. So we can set some challenging goals. Again, it comes back to what Wayne mentioned earlier about understanding where people are at as individuals. Where are their strengths? Where are their gaps? Um, and setting them goals based upon that knowledge. So someone might be very experienced with doing a risk assessment task, and you might set them the goal of teaching the new guy or new girl how to use that tool. So it's about different goals for different people based upon where they're at. Give workers new tasks, so allow them to maybe have a try at doing a health and safety rep role or some sort of safety relevant um, position that you might have in ShredX. Uh, so thinking of new ways to give people that chance to grow their knowledge and their skills. Uh, an example there of, from council is that they thought of asking a team member to share the pre-start delivery, so rather than that always being the leader or the supervisor, rotate it around the team and get everyone up and, and having a go at, at doing that. So that gives them that exposure to public speaking and being in front of their peers. And uh, in enhancing independence. So involving teams in decision making, as I said before, maybe procurement decisions or different things that might affect people in terms of their work. Encouraging people to speak up and provide their suggestions when you are looking at different initiatives or new ways of doing things. And where you can, um, doing those special project teams. So putting forward people as volunteers or suggesting they get involved in things like this, you know, like a lead, a lead program where you can get that, that input, get people's opinions, get them helping out with the content, learning the delivery. Um, there are sorts of things that we can do to build that independence. So consultation, we've, we've sort of covered this already, so I won't ask you again. We've, we've had a lot of discussion about consultation. Um, but in the content of the training, we really spend a lot of time on consultation because we know it's an obligation. It's also really important to do right. So consul consultation is great because what it does is it affects a lot of other things apart from just the safety outcomes. It builds trust, builds communication, educates people when it's done well, um, and builds that risk awareness and knowledge of what can go wrong. So what makes it effective? Well, a few little things. Doing it consistently, not a one-off. Uh, something that's built into our routines. It's something that's part of our daily, or, you know, fairly frequent discussions. Two ways. So it's not just the leader saying, has anyone got any questions? It's more about guys or girls, I want you to actually contribute here. I need your ideas, your, your concerns. The company is thinking of putting this new piece of equipment in place. We need to know a lot about how that might affect your work and your safety. Asking questions rather than just telling people what to do. And as we said before, closing that loop is really important, um, making sure that the feedback gets down to people. Um, so it sounds like everyone here probably does that quite well, but when we have our supervisors who might be new to the role, we ask them, you know, what's one thing you might do differently to engage people in health and safety? Can you guys think of one thing that you might do differently based on those tools, ideas we covered? All right, so that's Energize. Obviously, we've gone through that really quickly because of the time factor today, but just to summarise, we talked about our safety commitment drivers, so our rules-based, values-based, relationship-based, and the fact that we should use all of them in combination to be really effective leading safety. Um, we talked about this idea of maybe having a vision that we communicate with our teams and leading a discussion on that, 
as one of the next steps of implementing this, and the four techniques of engaging others, the autonomy, um, meaning and impact, all those other consultation, those types of things. So as I've before, we do have that quiz, so that's the opportunity for people to have a little go at remembering what they've covered in the, in the training, um, start, stop, continue, and the homework for this module, if we were doing it um, out there in the field, is to take that vision or that, that Shredex has put together, have a conversation with your team, and then use one of those engagement techniques, whether it be you know, having the meeting and talking about how they're contributing, um, giving people some autonomy and decision making around that vision and how it's implemented, and actually giving those tools a go um, out there in the field.